the key to injury prevention and to truly enhance performance, a world expert in injury prevention once told me, was a simple equation. It's understanding load and your body's reaction to that load. When I first heard this, a light went off in my brain. And I said, wow, could it be that simple? I spent years in clinical practice and as a healer trying to understand how it was that I had a missing link in order to try to guys get better on the field. And then there it was, plain and simple. This big guru said, all it is is understanding load and your body's reaction to it. So I did what every journeyman did in this world and I decided to travel the planet. I spent almost two years traveling on the world, visiting some of the top sports teams and sub organizations in the planet and trying to understand what load meant. And the funny thing about that was that load wasn't a new concept. In fact, it was very old. Yet the understanding of it was not. The biggest thing though that I learned from flying all over the planet and learning was what load actually meant, not just for the sports teams that I worked with, but what load meant in my own life. Load is a set of variables which affect us externally and internally. This could be age, nutrition, sleep, our relationships, the work hours we spend, the home hours we spend. Everything, including sometimes finances, all pile up into what we consider as load. The key then is to try to understand how it affects us, because not many of us truly understand how that does that. Interestingly enough, one of the things I realized is that with sports science today and the advancements that's going on in the world of athletics, everything can be measured. Data is collected, analyzed, and strategies are created in order to try to predict and prevent injuries for athletes out there. Yet, many of us stand here, including myself, at that period of time not knowing how to then control that in my own life. Imagine this. You're sitting on a plane after a two-month holiday. Yes, I said two months. <laughs> You're one of these savvy travelers. So you find yourself sitting in that aisle seat and, and getting in there because you're part of that group one, group A, that everybody wants to be in. So you find your seat, you get settled, and you say, hmm, there's a couple of extra seats next to me. So I'm hoping that the person sits next to me or the couple that sits next to me, maybe they're cute, Maybe they're at least interesting. Or hopefully they're just asleep the entire time. And in that case, you can fall asleep because what? guess what? You just you had the most amazing time being on holiday and all you want to do is savor the moment and just get that nice long rest flying across the Atlantic, the Pacific, whatever you want to call it. And then you say, hmm, okay, it's perfect. Be awesome. But then you lock eyes on that young couple with a baby Hmm. You tell yourself, man, I hope that's not, I hope, no, no, that can't be. They're not coming right next to me. But that gut feeling inside of you just says, you know what? You're the lucky guy today, dude. You're the lucky guy. So you try to deny it. You try to do that look away thing that you do. And then you get that magical tap on your shoulder. Excuse me. We're in there. And you're like, man, really? All right, it's okay. I got it, I got it, but we're good. You empathize with this family because you know that maybe you know, they, they themselves had, had a great, good holiday or maybe not, you, know, you, know, you never know. So you never try to assume anything. And then you hope that at least one thing occurs this entire time. You hope that that baby doesn't start wailing at any moment. But then as nature intends it and the universe obviously is on your side, guess what? She is crying, or he or she is crying the entire time, right from the takeoff. So you tell yourself, I can handle it. I'm going to center myself. My cup is either empty or full, however which way you want to call it. And you sit down, you put your earphones on, and you say, look, I got it. But 
everyone around you doesn't feel the same way. They're moving, they're looking up, back and forth. They're like saying, oh man, that guy is so unlucky. <laughs> He's really going to get it all tonight, you know, or, or today, you know, as he's sleeping. But then what if, you know, my load at that period of time wasn't that much? Then I would have been fine since I've centered myself. But in a different light, if my load was high up this way, then I would be completely affected by it and be completely irritated by it. There are about 20% of people in this world that are affected by chronic pain. About 100 million Americans have it as well. That's more than diabetes, heart disease, and cancer combined. And in professional sports in the world I live in, it's easy to say it's about 100%. An NFL study once showed that about 80% of NFL athletes feel about severe or moderate to severe pain on a daily basis. And only 13% would actually say that they feel in excellent health. It's a wonder because these gladiators are, are working day in and day out. They are playing any given Sunday and they're in pain on a regular basis. But how is it they're able to perform, make a living, and enjoy their lives despite this pain? I sometimes find myself in pain, but the pain I feel will be nothing compared to the people that I often work with. The key to understanding load is to understand margins. Margins are the amount of space we put for ourselves to know how much load we're able to handle personally. I stand before you right now with my own personal margins kind of challenged. Before coming here, my sister got married just two days ago. So to have to organize my way to come from my sister's wedding, to come down here, starting this new endeavor that I have, and hearing my coach's calls to try to make sure I was ready for this talk today was quite the daunting experience. Yet, I was able to make sure that I had my margins set. I knew what I needed to take, and I knew what I needed to handle. Here's a simple analogy, something that I'm sure everyone is quite familiar with. Imagine you go to your barista on a regular basis, your local coffee shop, and then the barista once asks you, hey, what are you having? I said, hey, I'm going to have my, my regular coffee. Cool. Room for cream? And you say, no, it's okay. Fill it up. So you walk out of that coffee shop, and then you're so unaware of the challenges around you that all it takes is one person to bump you, and then that coffee starts spilling, and you're like, oh my gosh, I have to control this. But what if you tell yourself, yeah, or you tell the barista, you know what, yeah, give me some room for cream. Then you allow yourself some margins, the margin of error, so to speak, where you can walk through, get in your car, but you have that enough space in your coffee to be able to hold, to moonwalk, to glide through before you sit down in the car and hold it there because you know there's, a lot of, there's some space for you to work with. Think of my friend George. George is a professional athlete. In 2011, George had hip pain. For many years, he started to get this hip pain, but then he fought through it. George was at the cusp of his breakout year, so to speak. And he contemplated on surgery in order to kind of hide it in because, because he wasn't feeling in pain. But after a big powwow between us and a group of the higher-ups, we decided that, hey, George, why don't we just try this, man? Why don't we try and fight through this? Because, you know what, there's, there's two things that you can really only control in this world. It's attitude and effort. If you are able to control the attitude you have and put forth the effort that's necessary, all else is it's not your control. So that year, we made sure we had a plan. We formulated it, and guess what? George had a career year. He played the best he ever be he played ever. So it's clear that an integrated approach, including some mindfulness, some manual therapy, and a proper progression of load allowed George to perform at his peak. Sometimes what we have to consider is that a metaphor in sports is sometimes a metaphor for life. If the simple equation of understanding load 
is by figuring out that load plus your body's reaction to load is really what you all need in order to perform better at sport, then should it be the same thing for life? Yes, I'd have to say that it would be. We all want positive outcomes in life, and we all want the ability to be able to perform at our peak. When I was younger, living in the Philippines, my father was a big proponent of martial arts. I learned in martial arts that all it took was a little patience and tolerance. And even though you're punished with pain, doing bunny hops and duck walks, that it was okay, because you did it with a bunch of friends and you felt great about it. So, in essence, you have to think about this and you say, you know what, there's so many things in this world that are variables that affect us on a daily basis. If we learn to control those margins, and in turn, allow us some space for that room for cream. Then we'll all find ourselves being able to maybe have a better understanding of pain, maybe have a better understanding of how to improve performance, and understand how we can actually control some injuries to occur, and in turn, find ourselves having a happier life. And who doesn't want a happier life in this game, this game of life? Gratitude.